On December 1, 1946, Paula Weldon decided to hike on Vermont's long trail route and disappeared without a trace. What really happened to Paula Weldon? Stick around until the end of this video to find out how she left the college, where she went, and much more. The exciting plan. One of the best things about being in college is the freedom it comes with. Paula Jean was a student at Bennington College. On Sunday, December 1st, 1946, Paula decided to take a walk on Vermont's long trail route. She finished her working shift in the college's dining hall and went to her room to change into walking clothes. She used to sleep in Dewey Hall dorm and, like any other student, had a roommate. She told her roommate, Elizabeth Johnson, that she was going on a long walk. Since Long Trail was a hiking route near the campus, her roommate expected her to return after a few hours. But unfortunately, she did not know that this would be their last conversation. Initially, Paula had no plans to go onto the trail alone since she asked some of her friends to join her. However, her friends claimed to be busy, so she went hiking alone. How courageous. Since it was in the afternoon, Paula dressed lightly and did not carry any extra clothes or bags. She wore denim jeans, a top, a hoodie, and some sneakers that were not enough to protect her from the cold that December. The only items Paula took with her were a black band and a gold Elgin wristwatch. According to the school's policy, every student planning to stay out late was supposed to sign out and check in with a security guard after coming back. Since Paula did not expect to be gone for too long, she didn't sign out or talk to the security guard. Paula's walk that led to her disappearance. Paula was eager to walk down the long trail since it was her first time there. At around 2.30 p.m., Danny Fager from the service station saw Paula walking down the campus driveway. She took a ride from State Route 67A, near the college entrance, to State Route 9, which was close to the Furnace Bridge. Lewis Knapp picked Paula up at 2.45 p.m. and dropped her off three miles from the Long Trail. She walked the rest of the way to the beginning of the Long Trail. Since Paula was not very familiar with the length of the trail, she asked Ernest Whiteman and his three friends, who she met at 4 p.m. These guys were camping in Bickford Hollow when they saw her. The hikers were kind enough to answer her questions, which gave her confidence to continue walking down the trail. Paula probably lost track of time since it was dark by the time she was approaching the end of Harbor Road. It is believed that Paula continued walking into the darkening woods along the Bowles Brook Valley. The last time people believed to have seen Paula was an elderly couple walking 91 meters behind her. Though there were no confirmed sightings of Paula past the Fay Fuller camp, Paula Weldon strangely vanished from that moment, never to be seen again. The search for Jean Weldon. Later that day, Elizabeth Johnson, the roommate, started getting worried. However, she assumed that Paula was probably in the library, studying for upcoming exams. It was not until morning that she discovered her empty bed and reported her missing to the school authorities. After Paula failed to attend classes on Monday, the college president called her parents to confirm whether Paula had gone home. Upon hearing the news of her disappearance, her mother fainted. Her father, Weldon, came to the school, and search parties were put together to look for her. As expected, the entire school was in shock, and everyone, including the students, started looking for her. Bennington College was even closed for a few days, as everyone engaged in organized searches. Residents in the area, Boy Scouts, family members, firefighters, and of course, the police spent the next day searching for Paula. Following Dan Fager's report of seeing Paula walking down the campus driveway, a bulldozer was brought to dig up the gravel pit where he said he had seen her. Air searches focused on the long trail up to Glastonbury Mountain were also conducted. Despite so much effort by the entire community, there was no trace of Paula in the long trail or even the surrounding area. The parents were so desperate to find their daughter that her father even declared that he would give away $5,000 to anyone who knew of her whereabouts. This was probably one of the lowest moments of their lives. Unfortunately, no one attempted to claim the money since Paula remained unfound. Police investigation of Paula's case. By the time Paula disappeared, Vermont did not have a state police organization. The state investigator, county sheriff, and state's attorney were responsible for finding clues. Paula's father was getting restless, and he asked the investigators to bring extra law enforcement help. Dorothy Scoville, a state policewoman, and Detective Robert Rundle were assigned to the case. They took their time to interview everyone that saw or thought they saw Paula. 
During investigations, the police discovered that Fred Gazette was among the last people to have seen Paula since he lived along Harbor Road. It was reported that Fred was arguing with his girlfriend when Paula walked by them. Fred gave contradicting statements at the police station and was considered a person of interest. Fred told some people that he knew where Paula was buried, but later claimed he said that just to get attention. Imagine the agony he may have caused Paula's parents. The investigators did not discover Paula's body or any crime committed. After their search and investigations turned futile, they stopped investigating. Mr. Weldon, Paula's father, became more frustrated with the police force, and he felt that they didn't do all they could to find his daughter. For instance, he criticized them for not keeping any written records on the case during the first 10 days of her disappearance. Paula's father also felt that the lack of proper training on the local sheriffs led to a poorly run investigation of his daughter's case. The failure to find Paula led to the establishment of the Vermont State Police in 1947. Possible theories on her disappearance. This case caused a lot of tension in the community, and it was even aired by the media and documented in the papers. According to investigators, Paula may have gotten lost on the long trail and could have died from exposure. One of the witnesses, Ernie Whitman, who was investigated, said that when he saw the light clothes that Paula was wearing during her long walk, he told her that the weather was getting too cold. However, Paula ignored him and continued hiking on the long trail. Due to the lack of physical body to support this view, some people believe that it was just a theory and may not have been the cause of her disappearance. Another speculation following Paula's disappearance was that her father was involved. Before Paula disappeared, she is believed to have gotten into a fight with her father over a young man that she was dating. The fight may have been the cause of Paula not going home for Thanksgiving a week before her disappearance. When Elizabeth, Paula's roommate, gave her statement at the police station, she revealed that Paula had told her that she was depressed and did not go home during Thanksgiving. So was Paula's father considered a suspect? Apart from the fight, Paula's father went to Fall River, Massachusetts to investigate but went missing for 36 hours. His unexplained absence led to suspicion that he may have been involved in his daughter's disappearance. However, due to a lack of evidence, this theory didn't stick. The speculation was probably inaccurate, considering that it was Paula's father who kept pushing the state police to come and help with the investigation. Do you believe in the existence of supernatural forces? Some people claim that supernatural forces may have contributed to the unexplained disappearance of Gene Weldon. They argued that Paula went missing in an area called the Bennington Triangle. Reports reveal that at least five people have mysteriously disappeared in the same area in five years. Shocking, right? According to a certain author, the Bennington Triangle is characterized by strange occurrences. Apart from the disappearances, some people believe that the area is cursed, while others claim that the area has strange noises. Based on the fight between Paula and her father over a lover that she was seeing, people also came up with the theory that she probably ran off with her boyfriend. Others also suggest that Paula was depressed and may have killed herself in the woods. Some claim that she was either murdered or kidnapped, since no clues were ever found in the case. The disappearance of Paula Weldon remains a mystery to date. Novels and films inspired by the mysterious disappearance of Paula Weldon. The case of Paula's unexplained disappearance became quite popular. Though sad, it inspired author Shirley Jackson to come up with a short story called The Missing Girl. Additionally, author Hilary Wow's novel Last Seen Wearing was also inspired by the story of Paula's disappearance. Have you watched the 2020 film called Shirley? If yes, you're probably familiar with the story since Weldon's disappearance also inspires this film. Thanks for watching.